Folks began lining up here and getting their seats around 1.30 this afternoon for a 4 o'clock matchup in the World Cup. And you know what? They haven't stopped cheering for hours. For the next five nights, we're going to be bringing you all the sights, sounds, highlights, and stories that make the state of South Carolina's biggest sporting event one of the most popular stops on the PGA Tour. It's hard to imagine our founding fathers pounding hot dog after hot dog to commemorate the adoption of the Declaration of Independence back in 1776, but here we are. What I'm scared of is my daughter sitting over there. She was raised a New York Giants fan, but now she's cheering for Cleveland. Yeah. What have y'all done? We are live on Tybee Island where there's some cyclists feeling the need, the need for speed. The World Cup, where a tie feels like a loss, and a loss sometimes feels like a win. You know a tornado? <laughs> and it's so yeah. bad. You it's know good. sharks. Yeah. Put sharks in the tornado and you got trouble. The circus has arrived in Hoover, Alabama. It's not the greatest show on earth, but SEC Football Media Day is setting up shop. Kevin Farmer, congratulations. Good job. Give you a kiss, Al. Uh, how about that? There you go. How about that live television, my hey, buddy? Hey, baby. Proud of you. <laughs> And welcome back to Inside the Ropes right here on WJCL. Prior to the break, we caught up with defending RBC Heritage champ Graham McDowell. Last April, he came from behind to pick up his second PGA Tour win, defeating Webb Simpson in a one-hole playoff. The secret to McDowell's success can't be found in his bag. He'll be the first to tell you that last year, it was a special friendship that helped him claim the tartan jacket. Take a look. Golf has always been more than a game for Kyler Aubrey. He used to go to the television and he would put it on the golf channel when he was two years old and my mom would be like, Kyler, why don't you like cartoons like normal kids do? But Kyler Aubrey is no normal kid. Born with cerebral palsy, Kyler is confined to a wheelchair, unable to walk or talk on his own. But with his infectious smile and love for the game and the professionals that play it, Kyler is right at home on the links. A lot of the stairs we get uh, going to grocery stores and things are people staring for other reasons. While he's in the golf course and engaged with the golfers and people see that he knows them, they're staring for positive reasons. For years now, Kyler and his dad Josh have attended PGA Tour events across the country. And on countless occasions, the Statesboro father and son have come face to face with golfing royalty. The pictures and autographs in Kyler's room, keepsakes of unforgettable moments the Aubreys have shared. The golfers will come up to him, they'll talk to him, they remember him, they'll give him a ball, and he gets excited. And that, I think, helps lift his spirits and you know the interaction. And, and it's one of those rare times where people are very envious of Kyler, where a lot of times, not so much. These days, there's one golfer in particular that Kyler keeps a close eye on. Graham is good golfer and my friend. That good golfer and friend is defending RBC Heritage champion Graham McDowell. He was here for three of my four rounds last year when I won the RBC Heritage. Uh, he's kind of my inspiration, you know, he, uh, he, he puts my life in perspective because he's so happy despite what he's gone through in his life. What started out as a meeting along the fairway has turned into a friendship built on mutual respect and admiration. Anytime I ever got remotely frustrated or disappointed on the golf course, you know, I, I just had took, took a look over at his smiling face. He didn't mind if I made birdie or bogey, he was just happy to be out there. But Graham and Kyler's friendship goes beyond the tees and greens. The two regularly talk on the phone or video chat on the computer. And just last month, the Aubreys were Graham's special guests at his Orlando restaurant during the Arnold Palmer Invitational at Bay Hill. The Aubreys say they're thankful and blessed for McDowell's friendship and generosity. But Graham says he's the one who's truly been touched. He puts my life in perspective, and I feel like I, uh, you know, I learn a lot from him. A truly special friendship there. Kyler and his dad Josh were at Harbor Town this morning, where they once again caught up with Graham McDowell. And how about this? Graham is working on something special, having Kyler be his caddy at next year's Masters for the Par Three contest. Without my bike, I don't know where I would be. Giving me the strength to overcome a lot of obstacles. No obstacle larger than living with cerebral palsy since he was just two days old. But that hasn't slowed down Peter Iannuzzi, a cycling enthusiast, with a message. If you want bad enough, nobody's going to stop you from doing what you want to do. It's inspirational words like those Peter will spread around the Peach State this summer 
when for the seventh time he'll take part in the bike ride across Georgia. I started riding bikes when I was 10, but I didn't uh, start doing long distance cycling uh, back in 1994. Peter using the sport of cycling as a platform to educate people about his disability, something he's gained confidence in doing thanks to his experience on two wheels. I see so many, so many people with disabilities, you know, put themselves down. I used to do that too, but not anymore. On a bike named after his late grandmother, Dolly, Peter has seen the country, taken part in three rides across the state of Tennessee, another across North Carolina, and his longest journey to date, Atlanta to Boston, several years ago. Anything that you are up to or want to do, you have to power yourself. Nobody's going to do it but yourself. Cycling has given Peter Iannuzzi so much, but most importantly, it's given him a voice that he plans to use with each passing mile. If I can do it, then anybody can do it. No matter what happens in life. The sounds of Saturdays in the fall are unmistakable in Statesboro. Paulson Stadium comes alive with the music of Southern Pride, thousands of screaming fans, and the cheers of this talented bunch of student athletes. But for one member of the Georgia Southern cheerleading squad, this is what game day sounds like. Sophomore Hope Gassaway suffers from profound hearing loss, but despite not being able to hear the cheers, she's found a place leading them. It's not that hard for me. Everything is possible for deaf students and deaf cheerleaders. Gassaway is in her first season cheering for the Eagles. After cheerleading for two years at high school, Hope was ready to give it a try at Georgia Southern. I first started to decide when I was in my first years of college that I wanted to be a cheerleader. While fans are able to see Hope and the rest of the cheerleaders in action, what they don't see is another important part of the team. Robin Greenstein, a sign language interpreter at Georgia Southern, stays in the shadows of the stands, relaying information to Hope. I think it's wonderful. I wouldn't say despite having her hearing disability, it's in addition to. She's just like anybody else. In addition to the help from Greenstein, Hope has pretty much mastered the art of lip reading. But more importantly, she's gained the respect of her fellow cheerleaders and given support to her university. I think that the first deaf president of Gallaudet University, I King Jordan, said it best. He said that deaf people can do anything except here. Good evening, sports fans. With a huge crowd expected for their GHSA Class AA Championship Series this Saturday, the Benedictine baseball team removing advertising banners along the outfield fence to allow more fans to be able to see the cadets battle Greater Atlanta Christian in the finale. But one banner remains. It's this one. The 1961 Benedictine cadets were the first and last baseball squad to claim a state baseball championship over at BC. The 2014 squad hoping to add a second banner to the fence come this weekend as they host their fifth postseason series right here in Savannah. Wins over Lamar County, Fitzgerald, Lovett, and Wesleyan have the cadets into the state championship games. And as you would expect, this bunch counting down the hours to Saturday's game against Greater Atlanta Christian. Oh, we're excited. You know, it's a good day to, uh, to, to be a BC cadet on Saturday. And there's going to be a lot of people out here. And, you know, we're just glad that we could get to here. And, and uh, we don't want to come up short. It's crazy, man. We've been thinking about it since last year. We're all excited about it, fans, all of Savannah's behind us. We're excited, ready to play. The GHSA Class AA Championship Series gets underway Saturday right here in Savannah. The Cadets will host Greater Atlanta Christian for all the marbles. The series gets underway Saturday afternoon at 1.30. Game 2 follows Game 1. A third game, if needed, would be played on Monday afternoon. While Benedictine is hoping to be crowned state champs in a couple of days, over in Statesboro, some state champs presented their bling Thursday afternoon. Back in March, the Bullock Academy girls basketball team claimed the GISA Class AAA State Championship. Today, the girls got their prize at a special 
special ceremony in front of the entire student body. The Lady Gators presented their state championship rings. The 2014 state title was the first for a Bullock Academy basketball team. Heck, it was the first state basketball championship for a team from Bullock County since 1991 when the boys of Statesboro High claimed a GHSA title. It's been a long time for our city and our county, and I'm just uh, still so very proud of the girls, not only for what they accomplished, but the way in which they did it as well. It was the biggest moment of life. We were all shaking and nervous, thinking about what would happen if we lose. We never went into the game with, oh, we're going to win, we're definitely going to win. We always thought about what if, what if, what if, but we knew we had to play together and play smart and play as a team and keep God first. At first, I was just shocked. It kind of hit me right after like we're all going to get rings and this is really going to stand for something good. A pair of Windsor Forest student athletes were signing letters of intent Thursday afternoon. Football standout Lewayne Jamison and soccer standout David Jones. The Knights with the pens out. Jamison is headed to Reinhardt University while Jones is headed to the South Carolina Upstate to get his kicks at Newberry. Oh, it's so exciting. Um, I've been waiting for this probably since the eighth grade when I first started paying attention to college soccer. I would go onto the NCAA website, look up how teams were doing. It's a relief because all the hard work I did, I've done this far paid off being a kid playing football, coming in my freshman year, not even starting to my sophomore year, starting for three years in a row. It's been a great experience. For the past couple of weeks, the Stewart Slide Memorial Foundation been giving back to athletic departments around Savannah the financial donations in memory of former Savannah Country Day student athlete Stewart Sly, who died in a car accident back in 2012. Today, a special presentation as the foundation presented a check of over $4,000 to Stewart's beloved Hornets. The money will be used to purchase needed video equipment for the Country Day football program. Everywhere you look around this campus, you'll see number five or you'll see a hat that has some or you'll see a uh, armband or something so his legacy will be here forever. We've always talked about we're climbing this mountain here at Country Day to get to the, pin, uh, the pinnacle and to reach that state finals and we believe that this uh, video equipment and the end zone camera is going to help us to do that. The Armstrong Atlantic softball team opened up the NCAA Division II softball championships with a win on day one. The Pirates knocked off Westchester 5-1 and will now face top-ranked West Texas A&M Friday afternoon up in Salem, Virginia. Armstrong got home runs from Haley Ellis and former South Effingham standout Alexis Mercer. Mercer's home run was her 23rd of the season. The Georgia Southern Eagles looking to avoid elimination at the Southern Conference Baseball Tournament in Charleston. Eagles taking on top seed of Western Carolina. Garen Palmer getting the party started for Southern with the second inning solo home run. It was 1-0 Eagles. Moved to the sixth, now 2-1 Western Carolina, but here come the boys in blue. Ben Morgan, he's got the shot to left. That ball getting out of here. Game was tied at two. Next batter is Aaron Mizell, and folks, what you're about to see, well, it's no boomerang, because this thing, it ain't coming back. The huge blast to dead center going to put Georgia Southern back on top, and that's where they would stay. Eagles beat the Catamounts 8-4. to four. The final up next for Georgia Southern, they'll take on Furman Friday afternoon. Former Georgia Southern standout Lavelle Westbrooks has signed with the Cincinnati Bengals. Westbrooks was taken in the seventh round of the draft by the Bengals. Not, no financial terms were announced, but he's expected to make just under half a million dollars in base salary during his rookie season. That's according to the rookie wage scale outlined by the NFL's collective bargaining agreement. As for Jarek McKinnon, the former Georgia Southern standout is the only Minnesota Viking draft pick yet to sign a contract. McKinnon was taken by the Vikings in the third round of the draft. The former all everything Eagle took part in Minnesota's rookie mini camp last week. And of course, we'll keep you updated when Jarek does put that name on the dotted line.